Professor Belfrost's computer science class is back! Hi, welcome back. And here's Professor Belfrost's class on computer science. And today, we are going to explore another concept on computer science. Uh, continue our last lesson. And if we are already ready for today's episode, then let's go. Okay, so let us do this first. Okay, continuing from our last lesson on instruction, part learning, and superstar. Okay, uh, instruction part lesson. Okay. <coughs> Okay, now we are entering new topic, which is design issues. Now we'll uh, discuss about instruction level parallelism versus machine parallelism. Okay, the first one is instruction level parallelism. It exists where instructions in a sequence are independent and thus can be executed in parallel by overlapping. Okay. And the degree of instruction level parallelism is determined by the frequency of true data dependencies and procedural dependencies in the code. Okay, and these factors in turn are actually dependent on the instructions architecture and on the uh, application. Okay, and also determined by operation latency, which is the time until the result of instruction is available for use as an operand in the subsequent instruction. Second is that we have mach machine parallelism. And this is a measure of the ability of the processor to take advantage of instruction level parallelism. And machine parallelism is determined by the number of instructions that can be fetched and executed at the same time. Both are similar and uh, both are important factors in enhancing the performance. Okay? So a program may not have enough instruction level parallelism to take the full advantage of machine parallelism in the use of a fixed length instructions architecture as in an RSP that enhance the instruction level parallelism. And on the other hand, the limited machine parallelism will limit the performance no matter what the nature of the program. Okay, next we are discussing about the instruction issue policy. Okay, so machine parallelism is not simply as a matter of having multiple instances of each part length space. The process itself must also be able to identify instruction level parallelism and to orchestrate the fetching, decoding, and execution of the instruction in parallel. And it uses the term instruction issue to refer to the processor to the process of initiating instruction execution uh, in the processor function units and the term instruction issue policy to refer the protocol used to instruct the instructions. And in general, that we can say that instruction issue occurs when instruction moves from the decode stage of the pipeline to the present execute stage of the pipeline. Okay, there are three types of orderings. Okay, they are important. Okay, so the first is the order in which the instruction fast, second is the order in which the instruction are executed, and third is that the order in which the instruction update the contents of the register and memory locations. Okay. Uh, the more sophisticated a process, so then the less is it is bound by a strict relationship between these ordering. And to optimize our utilization of the various pipeline elements that the process will need to alter one or more of these ordering with respect to the ordering to be found in strict sequential ex uh, execution. In general term, that we can group the scale of instruction which you put into the following uh, categories that we will discuss one by one. So first one is the in order issue with in order completion, second is in order issue without with out of order completion and out of order issue with out of order completion. The first one, in order issue with in order uh, completion. This is the simplest one. Okay, okay. It is to issue instruction in that order that would be achieved by sequential execution in order issue and provide the result also back in the same order in order completion. Okay. Um, here is outline in the figure 40.48 okay so this is for in order issue and order completion this is for later uh, in order issue and of order completion okay so when you see the 
uh, execute and the right one. Okay, let's see how it is done. Okay, and also this is for the letter C out of position, out of order, position. Okay, whereas for the other issue with out of order completion, they use in Stellar RNC processor. Okay, to improve the performance of instruction that require multiple cycles. And with out of order completion, the n number of instructions that may be in the executed states so at any one time up to maximum degree of the machine parallelism across the functioning units. And instruction issuing is taught by a resource conflict, a data dependency, or a procedural dependency. And in addition to what the limited has been mentioned before, the new dependency which are uh, with earlier as an output dependency or WAW dependency will arise too. Okay, so let's switch the problem. Okay, and this also require more complex instruction issue logic than in order completion. In addition, it's also more difficult to deal with instruction drafts and execute. Because when trial occurs, the instruction executed at the current point is suspended and to be resolved. Then the processor must assure that the resumption takes into account that at the time interruption, the instruction ahead of the instruction that caused the interrupt may already have completed. Then we have out of order issue with out of order completion. With an order issue, that the processor only decode instruction up to the point of dependency or conflict, and no additional instruction are decoded until the conflict is resolved. And this results in the processor that cannot look ahead of the point of conflict. This is subsequent instruction that may be independent of those already in the pipeline that may be useful introduced into the pipeline. And to allow the out of order issue, that is necessary to decouple the decode and execute stage of the pipeline. And it's done by using a buffer with respect to an instruction window. So with this organization that after a processor has finished the coding instruction that is placed in the instruction window, as long as the buffer is not full, then the processor can continue to fetch and decode new instruction. And when function units become fired in the execute stage, the instruction from the instruction window may be issued to the execute stage. Okay. So any instruction actually may be reserved. Uh, it provides that the first one it, it needs the particular function unit that is available, and second one is that it no there are no conflict or dependency block in this instruction. And the result is that the processor has a look ahead capacity capability that allow it to identify the independent instruction that can be brought into the execute stage. So here, okay, the out of order issue of a completion process is subject to some constraints. So an instruction can uh, an instruction cannot be issued if it violates a dependency or conflict. And the difference is that more instructions are available for issuing, reducing the probability that a pipeline stage will have to stop. And in addition, a new dependency, which is referred to anti dependency, arises. So this is also the problem for this kind of. Okay, next one. Okay, this paragraph is the same paragraph. One common technique that is used to support out of all the completion steps a readable buffer. So the of the buffer is temporarily correct for results completed out of the order that are then committed to the register file in program order. Next we discuss about register renaming. So when out of order instruction issuing and all out of order instruction completion are allowed that we have seen that there are possibility of WAW dependencies and WAR dependencies. And this dependency differs from the RAW data dependencies and resource conflict, which reflect the flow of the data through a program and then the sequence of the execution. Okay? The WAW and the WAR dependency on the other hand arise because the value in registry may no longer reflect the sequence of the values dictated by the program flow. Okay, so when instructions are issued in sequence and completed in sequence, it is possible to specify the content for each register at each point in the execution. But when out of order techniques are used, the dependency register cannot be fully known. 
at this point in time because uh, the sequence of instruction dictated by the program. And in fact, the pairs are in conflict uh, for the user register and the processor must resolve this conflict by occasionally installing a pipeline stage. Okay, so this is the issue. Under dependencies and outcome dependencies are both example of storage conflict. So multiple instructions are conflicting for the use of the same register locations, generating pipeline constraints that retard the performance. There are some methods for dealing with this. One method for solving this is that yes, this is a traditional one, duplication of resources. In this context, the, the technique is named register renaming. So actually, this is just register are allocated dynamically by the processor hardware and they are associated with the values needed by instruction at various points in time. So when a new register body is created, the new register is allocated for that value. The subsequent instruction that access that value as a source operand in the register can go through a renaming process that the register reference in those instructions must be revised to refer to the register containing the needed value. And thus, actually, the same original register reference in several different instructions may refer to different actual registers. And also, it is different values are intended. Also, there are alternatives to register renaming, which is called scoreboarding. In a sense, that scoreboarding is a bit tricky technique that allow instruction to execute whenever they are not dependent um, on previous instruction and there are no structural hijacks that present. Next one, we'll discuss about machine parallelism. Okay, so let's do machine parallelism. Okay, so the typicals. So, yeah. Actually, this is just a research result. It's actually not very important. Branch prediction. Any high performance pipeline machine must address the issue of daily different branches. Okay, yeah, this is important. Uh, yeah, so the advent of RAC machines that did like branch strategy was explored. And this allows the processor to calculate the result of conditional branch instruction before unusable instruction has been dispatched and with this method the processor always executes a single instruction that immediately follows the branch and skips the pipeline for while the processor fetches a new instruction string next we have a superscalar execution okay so what is important here is that this is the final process. Okay, so primarily instructions are conceptually put back in sequential order and the results are recorded because the one here actually has been outlined before. Okay, this is also important. Okay, we have instruction set, then it is implemented for the dependencies, then it's dispatched okay, into a window of execution, then it's, it's long, no longer for the sequence but a structure. Okay, actually this has been outlined the previous lesson. Okay, so the final step here is referred to committing or retiring the instruction. And this step is needed. Why? Because of the use of parallel multiple pipelines, the instruction may conflict in an order that different from the shown in the static process. And further, the use of branch prediction and speculative execution means that some instruction the complete execution and then must be abandoned because the branch process is not taken. And therefore, that the methods and program register cannot be updated immediately when instruction complete execution. And resource must be held in some sort of temporary storage that is usable by the dependent instruction and then made permanent. And it is determined that the sequential model would have executed the instruction. Okay. 
next one they have a subscribe implementation this okay i think this is the last one for this lesson okay, so yeah there are some general comments okay to be made about the subscribe approach okay there are some of this first instruction that distributed simultaneously affects multiple instruction often by preceding the outcomes of and pressing beyond additional branch instruction okay second logic for determining two dependency info heuristics of values okay this is important this is a very okay and uh mechanism for communicating this has to where the analytic gain at the time third is a mechanism for initiating initial multiple instruction parallel we also have resources for parallel execution of multiple instruction also we need to have mechanism for committing the process step in the correct order This is mission specific, process specific. I mean, okay, I'm not going to this. Okay, let's see if there are some opportunities here. That's quite important. And that's all our lesson for today. Thanks for watching. And here's your to do list. So please subscribe, give a like, comment, and share this video to your friend. I'll be back on every Monday on the same class in computer science. And don't forget to visit our website at https colour for Facebook slash science with xyzwnws.com. Keep watching and be thoughtful. Goodbye. See you on the next episode.